I'd, I think maybe especially may, and, and you can and you can sink. So so you used to be able to you used to be able to lay line, and this is maybe me being bad, and and it might be you used to be able to lay line and steal objectives. Yeah, very possibly you because, can still do that. I know with VP well, you used to definitely be able to do that because that was how I won ninety percent of my Curse Hollow games. I would just throw <laughs> a VP at Zeratul and stand on it and steal bosses. I, I do for, believe it still works in that same way, yeah. Yeah, with because you have to move out of the way, right? Like that's yeah. part of the mechanic. Like I'm ninety percent certain that it works that way. So like every single boss, had he gone ley line, he would have at least forced a hey, we mm-hmm. need to spread yeah. out now. Yeah. I wonder I wonder if it was also like there's a little bit of just that that player themselves sitting that sitting there like, oh no, I can outplay Nintori. Like I wonder if they were sitting there like I can outplay them with the polybomb. Like I can get it before they get the sync or you know, like mm-hmm. I'm I'm gonna get I'm gonna hit my R button first and and maybe just like that was the attempt. And we did see we did see some good poly value. Like there were at least two moments on screen where there was a polybomb, they mounted up, they got away, and they didn't die. But granted, they still lost majority of their teams that's, during that's that like fight. The, so like we use an ability uh, to lose yeah. less rather than we use an ability to win. Like, yeah, I agree. I agree. It's like gaining health in a card game. You know, gaining health in a card game is good in some cases, but mm-hmm. in most, you know, unless your health is at zero, <gasps> gaining health isn't that good. And we see a Ooh. Mephisto going to be picked up here. Oh, I think that's dirty right there. Mephisto and Ana. Mephisto has a like, what is it by like sixteen? They have probably the majority of their like. I know it's like it still is level sixteen, but we're on Tomb of Spider Queen. This map typically goes sixteen plus easily when it comes to levels. Like Mephisto scales really, really well in the later half of the game, and if they can play into that, I think this is a really good one to pick coming out from Croissant. Um, but a Diablo Malfi, I love. Oh my god, I love this. Like we were talking about, like pick more different, like picking different tanks. Like go. this yeah. Diablo, like yeah, he's still up there in the meta but like it's usually etc joanna malganis like it's it, those are the standards and i know a couple of them were banned out but still like malganis is still really a, a big threat on a map like this etc's disruption is annoying um but i love the diablo shadow charge you have a lot of engagements harassment malfurion has some good poke in there some setup with the et or with the diablo and rare can just sit there and pepper does uh do you know if the diablo and, and maybe chat will know as well um does the diablo flip on the uh mephisto still if you time it perfectly I, does it still like bug pull him into your team i know when I the character originally came yeah. out that was definitely a thing i haven't heard of it being fixed but i've never i haven't yeah. seen anyone do it but the other thing too is like i don't see a lot of diablo play because of just uh, he isn't really top tier priority yeah. in the meta so he's good. He's got his maps like like ever here. He's got some maps where he really shines and, he, you know, that kind of buffs his spot. The reason Tomb of Spider Queen is so powerful. It's a small map, lots of rotations, lots of corridor fights where he mm-hmm. benefits. Um, but oh, that's wow. an Uther Malthea. Wow. Uther main tank. There you go. There's a new tank. Whoa. <laughs> I need to I walk away. Ziva. I love this. That's how I got to. I love that. this. Hello, and here's your warning in case they switch to a different skin. Um. <laughs> I actually, I like, we rarely get in a Zebo, but like Diablo pushing people around, some some zombie wall, some zombie walls, like the scaling of Nazebo overall. Like as we said, the, like Tomb Spider Queen typically goes pretty late. It can go quick. It definitely like, I I would say like the average Tomb of Spider Queen game is like it's either twelve minutes or twenty four minutes. Like it's it's one of those two things mm-hmm. uh, that uh, that you get for this map. Also, um, Aulox, I think. Thank you for the raid as well. Welcome, oh, welcome, welcome everyone from their stream. Yeah. We have uh, the in-house league this evening uh, brought to you by CCL. And uh, we're in week number six of this bad boy. We got some, we got a little bit of money on the line for these players. It's a best of five series. We're getting into game number three here on Tomb of Spider Queen. So we're going to see who's going to be winning this out. Um, I honestly think like backing up into our draft, it's, it's, I wouldn't say unconventional because like Uther main tank's not that crazy of a concept, but like, I kind of lean a little bit into Cassant here. Their comp the is kind game, of fire. That math, I like the Matthew pick is. a lot, actually. Um, I agree, but it's it's the scaling that I'm worried about from Donuts. That's the thing I'm worried about. Yeah, do, 
Okay, well, they both scale really well, though. Like, Nano Mathiel is very good. Mephisto level 16, 20, true, true. very good. Uther can true. die, come back, very good. Redemption's uh, really good at 20 with them. Yeah. yeah, so, like, honestly, both of their teams are, like, pretty good scaling. Um, And like you were saying, like, Spider Queen is one of the maps where, you know, you can win at level 16 with a boss spider, right? You see that a lot. You it, maybe not as much uh, with the new changes to the buildings, but, you know, it used to be like, get 16, get a spider, get a boss, win. Um, or it goes really late, but we'll see as we get into game number three here. Looking at both sides, uh, you can actually, you get this camera angle is, oof. You get that, you get that. When the, when the person who makes the Observer also makes some StarCraft stuff, they, they <laughs> tend to throw a little StarCraft in there as well. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely something you can program into your own... Um, into your own it's basically into your keyboard it's just your uh insert and delete keys when oh, you use really? alley obs and yeah it's you have to like change one little thing and there's a whole walkthrough on his website it's it's actually really it's it's just a cool little thing that you can add in and, and it just makes your uh your two keys uh rotate the camera but either way we are here on to miss spider queen game number three as we have a bit of an engage starting things out in this mid lane that's gonna be a shadow charge from dentori getting into that well trying to get into the back line but they're actually gonna turn around and back off as this is gonna be a lot of damage to troy who needs to cycle out our solo matchup is going to be ragnaros versus a malthiel now malthiel gets a lot of value from percent based healing and ragnaros doesn't have the biggest health pool in the world oh wait valmar could chase it Okay, I was about to say, Valmar could get a killer right there, but they're going to end up backing off right now as we get back into the top lane rotations as the zombie wall comes out, but that actually might have saved Hot Show. I figured out what, what's happening here with this Nazebo pick. Yeah? Check out that level one talent. Oh, it's spell power. I love it. Well, it's, Things of the Deep, right? It's increased, yeah, things... it's increased range. So oh, yes. They're zombie walling Mephisto's blink. So that mm. when he blinks back, he's walled, mm -hmm. and then Diablo can... Wall bank, and then I was just purely just like, shot. yeah, I was just like, yeah, spell power, more damage, yeah, I can get you, but no, that range, yeah, yeah, definitely, that that changes things. That this is going to be twenty percent range increase over power coming out. There's going to be a lot of damage onto Hacho, who does get zombie walled, and there's exactly kind of what you're talking about. They zombie wall someone who's a little too far forward from the Diablo, and this single target. I mean, we're looking at essentially like a melee version of the Stitches kidnap composition, kinda. Like Diablo just kinda gets in there, zombie wall right, th oh, Again. oh wait, the root from Malfearing Legacy with that root though, got CPX to uh to really not get their agility value, but I'm excited to catch these as these zombie walls are gonna be probably used off cooldown. Yeah, just to pick potential there. Obviously the Ana can do a really, really good job of keeping people alive, especially if that target just so happens to be Uther. Um, if he opts into going full Q, uh, as we see at level 1, he has taken the first Q build um, talent. Um, see Porky kind of picked out there, but no real follow-up uh, as the camps are getting picked up there. Coming out from the side of Donuts, able to pick up the easy camp, potentially pushing out mid, probably rotating into the hard camp. Uh, CPX actually caught out here. The Rue is a, unable to connect. Probably jump over the wall here, gets away. Porky doing his best to keep everyone topped up and healed. But the mana is kind of running low, and everybody's health bar is on the lower side here for Team Croissant. Mm. It's it's just rotations right now for gems, but I think they're they're starting to get weary of of how they're playing this you know this this composition with this Nazebo, and they're just like, all right, we're we're not gonna try and match you in rotations. We're gonna try and spread out further. Like, look at the rotation CPX just made. They went they're rotating all the way back here instead of their front gates. I know they're going to this they're going to this camp over here, but like you know they could have just easily rotated through mid lane and through their own gate. So it's just like they're they want to back off and play this as safe as possible. Um, really quickly for anyone that is wondering, Nazebo stacks they are they did just hit 51, so they're working their way through that. That 51 means that, or 54, or 55 actually, that means that they're going to be um, halfway through their things of the deep. So it's going to be five percent spell power, and at 100 stacks they'll get another five percent in increase, in that to 10 percent spell power. And uh, we'll keep you up to date on those. Diablo still sitting at 65. Uh, the simple geometry for the Hanzo at level 1 is going to be at 16 out of 20. The Silver Touch, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, is going to be 48 out of the 80 on that one. So just working their way through some of those questing talents. It's actually, Diablo is at 89 souls right now. Excuse me. Wow. So they're Jumping doing a really, up fairly quick. really good job of double soaking here with both the Nazebo yeah. and the Diablo. Um, just getting souls and, and stacks on, on mm -hmm. each of them. It's interesting to see, like, how much pressure Team Donut is able to put on with this composition, right? As we see, Pyra is going to get stunned here from the Diablo. The Rue is going to miss. A little mistimed flip from Nintori. Uh, Legacy kind of thinking that he would flip off the wall. 
Pirate able to get around him and kind of flip towards again. But he has another charge up again. Battle minimum at level 7 on Diablo. He might have another one up as well. Fighting into that spell power is kind of looking not too hot for yeah. the side of Donut. Uh, not able to really put any damage on that double support oh. composition. But the zombie wall holding up that hard camp. Maybe a turn in coming out from the side of Croissant. That's a lot of damage on the CPX. Yeah, they're going to get the auto into them right there. They actually didn't go for the turn. I thought they were going to get it as you were noting sure. it. And I, then I looked up and I was just like, oh, they're not. They didn't get it. Sleep Dart does connect from the Ana. This is Nintori still. Oh, nice shadow charge right into the wall. There's going to be an overpower. There's a root as well. Hotshot taking a lot of damage. Mm. Ragnaros comes around the corner and they get the last little bit of damage. That's a double kill in favor for the members of Donuts as their momentum is really building right now. Firestorm's coming out from this Diablo just to zone them back. And Nintori trying to get 32 out of their. Out of the uh, 50 necessary turned in right now, they've got 79 and, and more so gems on the side of Donuts. And uh, yeah, they should be able to get themselves first turn in. Oh, wait, no. Valamor only needs to turn in these four, but they do they do get their turn in here. So that will be first web weaver in favor for the members of the Donuts and Croissant on the defensive foot. Now going to be trying to see. Well, oh, there there's is. the root. That's what you're talking about. Oh, oh, they actually boop him out? Oh, it's because he took the level seven talent. The level seven talent makes the wall. Yeah, yeah, Nintori's pissed. Maybe, okay, Nintori doesn't know. So the seven talent, I'm pretty sure, makes the zombies instead of uh, like a wall mechanic, like a Tassadar wall, it turns the zombies into like entities, like actual creatures. Mm -hmm. and because thus, it's the uproot. Yeah, yeah because the they rush. uproot. Yeah, so the coding of the game, you would think would work the same way, but I'm fairly certain. I, I will say that, that they, they played exactly the way that I thought they would in, in rooting the Mephisto right and then wall banging. I would, but I think I'm a bit of a miss at that level seven I'm, talent. I'm really surprised by Dead Rush. I'm not going to lie. Like, I, I feel like I don't see many, if any, Nazebos pick that one up right there because of the value that you're kind of getting rid of. You're getting rid of your your root or your your zone or your control or your, your gate, however you want to call it. Your Jarvis or Jarvin? Jarvin is the league one who throws down the giant. Four, yeah. Yep. Jarvin. yep. Yeah, so they're, 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 you know, you're getting rid of that kind of lockdown. And I, like, and I think, like, the way you explain it, at least as a non-developer, that makes sense to me. Like, they're going to uproot so they're no longer, like, rooted in the walls. So they're no longer an actual, like, collidable structure, if you will, or a yeah. collidable thing. So, inter interesting, interesting. We're, we're learning a little it bit right now. It activates, um, like, a, a programming in the code that, like, mm -hmm. says, like, oh, now this is not a wall. This is now an entity, right? Yeah, uh, like, you're shadow charging into a minion. Durance of Hate came out from Pirate Realm almost connecting onto them uh just max range coming out but didn't get it right there i'm just skimming through level 20 or level 10 towns we actually do have the oh, uh tranquility for the malfarian oh and gargantua yeah no no slappy goes for that in the i would have liked Gantra. to see it dude the, the gary gives something else for that mephisto to suck on um in these actually, team fights so it's gonna give him more sustain and, and ravenous actually the arrow connecting on a legacy is anyone gonna be able to get their team the sleep connects for mana good job from porky in the back line there fun's doing his best pirate fairly low here Nintori looking like he's gonna want to bang somebody up against the wall porky who's it gonna be hook coming out Nintori maybe overstepped here uh, able to walk away there i'm um, probably turning coming out from the team team uh croissant here they should be able to get it, but now I do want to point out map mechanic wise how this is going to descend. Uh, the difference between like Garden of Terror versus uh, Tomb of the Spider Queen. On Garden of Terror, the web weavers or the terrors will spawn as far up as your minion wave is. So right now, just spawn right in front of the gate. On Tomb of the Spider Queen, it goes up as far as the enemy minion wave or structure. So if there is nothing in front of them to stop them but a structure, it literally lands right there. As that's, oh my god, the combo onto this Ragnaros funds is going to get picked off. Nice use of the Divine Storm to lock them down consistently as the root comes out. Lightning Breath on into the face of CPX. There's going to be some some zombies around them as well. Pirate's going to get hit with the Nana Boost as they try and get some damage out as well. But it doesn't look like they're going to get enough. Sleep Dart does connect. And actually, I'm going to eat my words right there as they find the kill onto Ana. Pirate able to connect all sorts of damage there onto the Malfurion, and he is going to be taken down. No heals coming out here, but you got to be careful of those towers, Pirate. Mm -hmm. Connecting two shots, three, they're going to be on the Valmar. No, I'm tr just trying to get towers out here. This is a, an honest man's job. Uh, just, <laughs> just honest work here, uh, trying to take down two towers nowadays in Heroes of the Storm. Um, it's they, you know without without a Sylvanas it's a it's a bit of a rough go, um, <laughs> which is why she's especially been banned she's, every single game. Yeah, 
Like every single person. Oh wait, Hanzo rips an arrow. That's gonna connect onto two. Oh, I think they got max range. Less rights goes out. They find the kill onto Rainer and Nintori very low, trying to reset souls. Managed to do so. Now they're gonna try and zone back some of these gems. I think they did get the majority of them picked up. So still 63 in the pocket for the members of Donuts. But Croissant looking to potentially get themselves another turn in here. Turn in. And they'll be able to do that between Valmar, Pirate, and Porky right now. There's no interrupts coming through. That'll be back to back web weavers for them. But unfortunately, Lava Wave coming through bottom lane has pushed this back quite a bit so bottom lane won't get too much value top lane might be the apple of their eye as you were talking about earlier you know boss plus will weavers in the later half of the game but 13's up on both sides five to seven in kills and uh nazebo things of the deep finished out baseline quest sitting at 135 diablo souls are at six or excuse me next 10 uh silver touch and simple geometry from the hanzo are finished out and one stack on the last rights for the Malthiel, but Web Weavers descend, big wave in mid. Let's see what they're able to do with this McIntyre. Yeah, and they have the hard camp here as well, so that'll protect them from this rag fort. The nice thing about the rag fort is there's no armor as well. Maybe not the safest to push <laughs> under him. Uh, the aggro there won't exist in this fight, so they're able to target off the Diablo here, possibly picking him up. The last right is going to be able to take him down. Troy doing a lot of damage to Pyre, but he does have his speed to bounce back into his team. Get double support going online. You see Porky doing his best to pump heals, top everybody off with the Ana. Um, but no fort is taking down the middle lane. And now, well, since we've got the Diablo dead, let's shift to the top. Croissant probably able to pick this one up, but here comes the lava wave. Just do it. They're just trying everything in the handbook to stop them from taking these buildings. Not a lot of structural damage. The arrow is going to connect onto Lupus. Pacho connecting with oh. his stun as well. The D-Storm, 42 gems. Is anyone going to be able no to Legacy? Legacy? Legacy gets a couple, <laughs> but they're going to drop them closer to the front Nintori. gate. Nintori's back. But Nintori has no no health. Like, he not, not no health. They have no the souls. So they're yes. going to lose the majority. They still have a turn in, though. Fun? They, 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 they got enough to turn in. They can see, like, Funs could turn in 30 right now. I don't know yeah, why they I mean, don't just to get the... Uh, It's one of those... This is a life. This is a life question here, Baha. It's like. Oh, absolutely. Do we turn in here? You mm -hmm. get a zero value turn, turn in. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. This is zero value turn in, unless. Oh, a great unsolvable actually. Pretty sure Volimar can just. They could have just nanoed and just ran into you over there, like. I feel like they could have. Not pretty sure. Ninety nine percent sure they could have. Like, <laughs> uh, Diablo no souls versus a Matthew with a nano is like not where you want to be at in life uh the boss is going to be pushing into the top lane the the defensive turn in uh will stop a lot of this push and siege uh looks like croissant is just going to be able to probably free clear the spiders and at, at, at trade of you know the boss kind of doing nothing as well um, but they are going to be very very close to their own turn on turn in if not already having it after these waves are cleared up uh, but the 16 talent is right around the corner for team donut and we'll see if you know they can find some sort of pick. Uh, it's, it just seems as the game's scaling, as we were talking about before. While the Nazebo is really good at scaling, we're also seeing mm -hmm. the scaling of the things like Uther, uh, the Mathio, um, and in this yeah. case now at level 16, picked up from that uh, Mephisto. We're going to see the static field, right? 10% maximum health. Uh, that's just going to shred, shred that Diablo with only the Mafurian behind him to heal. Him. We'll see. No turn of it. Oh, Hanzo throws an error out. That's going to be a cleanse. There's a stun coming out as well. Hacho getting a position for a Divine Storm. There was a last rights out as well. They do live through a lot of that damage. Unstoppable as well as, excuse me, the Lightning Breath coming out. There's going to be the Zombie Wall Knight penetrating route from the Raider to force them back. Valmar very low is trying to live in this enemy team. They do find a two for two kill right there. Pirate is getting very low as well. Porky going to be low on top of it. They find a triple. Ooh. That's going to be the Malfurion getting shotgun blasted. Pirate goes down. Ooh. CBX Ooh. finds the counter kill. Lupus finds the counter, counter, counter kill. Gems are all over the floor. Naz God. Julian. 172 stacks on the Zebo, by the way. And the Nazebo walks away with the 18 gems. Yep. No no drink was spilled for the side they had, of like, the donut. They had just gotten enough on the side of Croissant for a, their another turn in. Like, they just got to 60, they, and they lost everything. They did that thing where they just, like, hard forced the fight at even talent tier with no advantage when they had advantage and potentially swung the game back. I, 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 it's, it's a, it was a really good, <laughs> a really good fight coming out from Donut. Uh, the Diablo just getting 
almost a full lightning breath off there, right? Uh, looked like Funz was able to get double double E off, um, do a massive amount of damage, sustain himself, obviously, with the shield talents and the Malfurion. Oh, the arrow! Lupus is paying attention. Perfect. Arrow's going to miss here. 60 second cooldown uh, before we see another <laughs> one of those. Uh... And, it was yeah. correct on my it was correct on my screen. I looked over at stream. It's not even correct at all, but either way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was Rekker a little bit of a naira get... nah there. Yeah, just narrowly missing as uh they get the camp. There's some camp pressure picked up from both sides. Boss will be up in 150. Lupus turns in the little bit that they do have there. I mean, they're just about halfway. I mean, with what's in their pocket as well as what's turned in. They're nearing themselves a, a turn in on the side of Donuts, but uh, 20 Talents here is a little bit closer on the side of Croissant. They're trying to turn this around. That's going to be a Durance of Hate. I think went out and Nintori very low. I think there's a Last Rites connecting onto them. That's going to be the Last Rites getting the kill. Lava Wave coming through mid lane. Funds will be going down. Lava Wave value not getting what they are expecting right there. And while they don't have many gems to lose, they're still going to be giving over a massive experience chunk to the side of Croissant, pushing them into that 20 Talents here a lot earlier than expected. I think the boss spawning in a minute from now, so... Not too troublesome. And that fight was like the perfect example of what they want to happen, right? They want to immediately pressure the Diablo. They want to kind of get that W out from Mephisto to shrink him a little bit. The Matthew connects. Now we're nano boosting or draining last right pick. Uh, that's kind of their, their bread and butter engage. Uh, but I don't think that, again, with this really team fight oriented comp, it's hard to push. Uh, as you see, they're you know, very slowly sieging down this fort. Um, the same will go for, especially keeps, um, just a, a hard time taking down structures with this type of composition. As they, you know, I guess Hanzo is the only thing that can really deal damage to it, right? Like mm -hmm. you have two supports, you have a mage that requires heroes to do anything, and uh, I guess an, a, another guy who, who drains percent health, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So Hanzo is pretty much it when it comes to Siege. So yep. uh, they, they're slowly but surely winning it. Legacy caught out by the arrow. It is going to be Ooh, enough to pick him play up. The Maybe game. Troy as well. Ooh. Is there a this penetrating round. round to knock oh him back? My. No. The stun comes out right there. Dead Rush coming out. And I want to point this out. 112 stacks for the Nazebo. 89 souls on the Diablo. 20 talent tiers here. Okay, they picked it up. I, I honestly got thought they were gonna like if they took upgrade on Gargantian, I was about to throw my monitor out the room. Just <laughs> I honestly got I had a stormly game where like the entire time like we were just stacking up the Zebo. We get to twenty, we were behind, and we were like, all right, this is gonna change this first because we we're just lacking the damage. And they picked the upgrade on Gargantian, and I just I literally shut off the in-game chat for me because I was like, I'm gonna say some dumb stuff to this person so no we're not I just i shut up the chat and i was like we're just gonna end this game and lose as Malthiel actually almost gets caught off right there really good sleep dart coming out from porky to save them but this boss rush will be picked up by the side of croissant looking for some top lane pressure in their favor as this boss hits for 675 in auto and is 34,000 health i honestly i don't think they can win here though um rack for it lava wave so up. rainer is going to be spawning very soon yep nazebo is incredibly good at defending especially if porky gets caught out uh, as you see, all the CDs are busted. Um, potentially, Pirate can do a lot of damage here, though, if he's able to find an angle, especially off of an arrow like that from CPX. Whoa. Connecting on a three legacy taken out. No, he's able to get away there. Diablo as well, bolting away with that level 20 heroic uh, talent that allows him to kind of epoch mini blink. Um, the mm -hmm. Gary's beating on everybody. Oh, but then he just immediately walks into the boss zone and dies. Gary. If only you were Gary, any, had any brain at all, but you're just a zombie humanoid thing. I, you know what? I wanna, I wanna say this really quickly. I wish Gargantuan the same treatment as Water Elemental or sure. uh, Ultra Lisk. Like, I don't get why Gargantuan's a zoning tool rather than a controllable tool. That, I, that, that to this day, I, I like, it keeps me up at night. It's just like, why isn't Gargantuan? A micro bowler, you know, like give it, give it like a Misha Ranger, whatever you want to give it, but just like I don't know. Heck, I, they I just feel like added just, fixate. It's... They added fixate to the game through Zul. Like use that same mechanic they just added to Nazebo. If you hit a spider, Gary goes after yeah. the spider. 
target yeah, or something you, like that, right? Like, he's, there you go. Yeah, so you have to use your abilities to target the, the Gary then so it's not just press your R button on a hero or whatever, you know? Yeah. I, I like that idea, but now Web Weavers will be descending in favor for Cassant. This is going to be to, uh, top lane crashing about halfway down the lane, bottom lane a little further back, but mid lane seems to be what they want to try and get value through as this is going to be 21 to 20 when it comes to our heroics. 234 uh, stacks for this Nasebo on their baseline quest, and they're going to burn through this Webweaver phase. Looks like they get the front gate. Top lane still healthy, so is bottom lane. What are these hitting for? 200 in auto from the Webweavers, and they got about 7k health. A 10k health in total. Right now, just nearing 6k. Yeah, and again, you're, you're really seeing the weakness of the team uh, with the double support, right? Uh, the, yeah. Their yeah. main way to win is through team fights, and obviously the Hanzo arrow is initiating a lot of that. Um, and if he does hit good storm arrows, it is very possible that they can win off of those. But just through the slow siege, it's very difficult with the Nazivo. Sleep it coming out from Porky into a shrink dart. Um, Lupus able to just kind of walk around away there. But yeah, good, mm -hmm. good hold defensively from this comp. They've obviously got a lot of very strong characters. Exterminator, level one on Rainer, Zebo, level 20 talent in Rag. Uh, which is one of the one of the best at defending and wave clear in general. So they have to find a way to turn in, right? This is this is the Spider Queen. We're going to level thirty. I'm gonna be honest. Spider Queen's a map where you go to level thirty. Like it can happen. Yeah. If the as, team's... as I said in the draft, like this is the map that either goes twelve or twenty four minutes, and we're 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 hitting that twenty yeah. twenty minute twenty and a half minutes. Yeah. So I, I think we're we're approaching kind of the big final fight, like. A one good team fight could be a win for either team. Bottom lane's a win condition. Arrow. Even mid lane's a will condition. Oh, yeah. And, and like, I'm not going to lie. Like, CPX has had some pretty pog yeah. arrows that set up Pirate. And, like, Pirate's had... Like, the setup for Pirate's been really good for a lot of the fights, too. Because the enemy members kind of are, are sitting in a radius. And, oh, the arrow's going to kind of travel to the side. But Pirate's getting a lot of value from the Shade of Mephisto. Excuse me, the Lightning Nova. They actually did go into the Mimic at level 20. That's going to be the lava away from the Ragnaros Divine Storm coming out as well. So there's going to be Endurance of Hate. A lot of damage and setup there. But, well, no damage. There's just a lot of setup. As that's going to be Lightning Breath. Uh, there's going to be an Apocalypse as well with the uh, Hellgate right there from the Diablo. There's so much happening right now as this will be Diablo Souls Reset. That will Rag be the uh, Rag core from too. Ragnaros. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that Ragnaros mountain core is going to defend some time right now and force the enemy team back once again. And no, no, no damage is really done structurally. The hard camp was pushing middle during that time period. But I think an overall very good fight there coming off from the side of uh, Donut. Um, I, I want to mention, I think at this point in the game, CPX really just needs to just sw sw send those arrows. Um, if, yeah. if, if Rag seems out of position or clearing a wave, uh, he needs to just throw them. Um, the cooldown at this point in the game, not so important. Obviously, those are windows where you could argue that Donut could engage onto Team Croissant um, when the arrow is down. But I believe their comp is defensive enough and, and kind of built to withstand an all-in that... Even if the arrow is down, um, Diablo can't really just say, oh, well, the arrow's down. I'm going to run into this yeah. Matthew, dude, they're double stun, D storm, <laughs> anti heal, 100% smile, nano last right. So, like, yeah, he still, like, mm -hmm. he still can't do that. Um, we saw there the arrow was used, it failed, and a fight was forced, in which case the Uther was flipped into the keep and killed uh but we do have a yeah. boss fight here and this this is one of the windows in which i believe croissant can win as a team fight will have to emerge from this boss all right so boss is leashed with a little bit okay. of health lava wave comes through top lane Ooh, hot show. so hot show shows there's an arrow nice ice block, block from lupus to get that that's gonna be what a 60 second cooldown on that so they'll have that at 24 minutes and couple seconds into that one right there turn availability is here for the members of donuts and you can see both teams know this could be a oh they actually oh. go back for boss hello Ooh. this is a misstep this might be a blunder um the boss is going to be taken i think it can still be defended the spiders is going to obviously spawn it and get the momentum of the map going um, in the other lanes for the side of donut but a, a potential all-in once that keep goes down the fight will there's there's two ways this goes. They all back and defend, or they go for yeah, they go for it. it. Yeah. Well, from the side of Croissant, Croissant's either gonna back defend the spiders, oh, okay. not see, lose I their see, keeps, or they're just gonna all in. Um, and as we saw, we see here the the first wave will be used to kind of proxy out that top wave. Ford is gonna happen from Rag, and he's gonna connect onto two. Hacho doing his best. I don't know if Hacho has his passive here. 
The rack fort goes down. The keep is down as well. The boss is headed towards the core as the fight is breaking out. Hacho is taken out there from Notoria. Great job. The arrow is going to connect on to Troy out front. Sleep going to connect as well. Taken out here. The boss is on the core. Watch out for that as Lupus is doing his best to try to put out damage on a pirate. Is he going to be able to enough? Gary doing his best as well. Matthew getting away with no health. Notoria obviously <laughs> knows what he's doing on Diablo as he tries to go for a Hellgate flip wall bang but the defense is happening like i said here double keep is coming out can funds even sniff this out <gasps> i was wondering if they were gonna throw like a meatball just in the bush or something yeah. like that but no 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 meatball in the bush so this is Find this is so exactly where we're at too right like now, now we're going to level 30 Baja. this is this is where <laughs> there's no gyms i guess there's 52 gyms maybe not maybe we're not going to level 30 i'm not sure they're going towards corridor oh, wants to take a 3-0 I mean, they, they, Nazebo's currently stacked at 277. But they also just took a lot of damage. That's going to be endurance of hate coming out from the Mephisto. That's going to be last rights on the Notoria. They'll go down. No souls to reset. That's full death timer. Lava wave coming through mid. That's going to help the friendly team disengage. Looks like they're going to be able to do so. Now, here's the thing. They only need to make two wave. Oh, they don't need to make rotations if they get the kills and they can just end game. Legacy is going to be getting forced back. They. Yeah, this. I was like, is he just dying to the spiders right now? They need to just, they just need to back off, grab waves, and get turn in here. <laughs> I love Boss this. Up I in... love this, the, this part of the game, though, because no one knows what the heck they're supposed to be doing right now, Boss. No, like, no, no, no. They're just like, like, are we supposed to defend? Should we all in core? Like, we just saw them try to force a 4v5 core with a Diablo. Like, mm -hmm. there was, uh, what, what was, why? Can't we just? Because, because, Mac. <laughs> Because that's, that's the reasoning. Yeah. <laughs> because we can. Red Web Weavers. I this is probably the latest game Web Weaver I've seen in a long time. And we're 26 minutes into this game. 24 to 25, 12 to 22 in kills. Um, I was just looking at some of the numbers earlier. Healing coming out from Alfarian, 130,000. Healing from the Ana, just shy of 10k. Like, this is some damage. Nazebo, 70,000 heroic damage. Mephisto. 128,000. They're not going to get either. F they're not going to get either keep here. That's the that's the crazy part. <laughs> Even with this camp, they're, they're they just the rag fort, the lava wave, a double lava wave. Yeah, yeah. It's just it, they're they're not even going to get a keep. So this turn in does nothing. A boss is going to have to. A boss is going to be the end of this game. Um, and I'm not sure when the next boss is. You can't see that at the moment. I think if my in-game timer is set, it's probably around two minutes from now. Uh, Sounds about right, yeah. It was like it was like three-ish minutes when when we were about to get Web Weaver, so probably somewhere in like 28, 29 minute mark in the game. As we were gonna have Web Weaver through top lane. Hanzo rips an arrow that's gonna connect onto three. They're gonna step in further. Matthew gets the mark onto a couple. Durance of Fate will be there. There's going to be the uh the blink from the Diablo with the Hellgate right there. We only see the Uther getting picked off. <gasps> I believe they have redemption, so they're gonna be back up in a second. Pyre's gonna get caught by the Ooh. zombie wall, gonna blink out of that one. Dead Rush should actually be stopping at the point. Lightning Breath coming out as well. They actually get the kill onto Pirate Room right there. Ragnaros gonna be going down. Nintori very low. Souls are going to reset, so they have four seconds on their death timer. And this is an absolutely wild ride as well. Weaver is going to be in bottom lane. Bottom Look lane, at the, the core lane. health. Yeah, core health is falling rapidly as Troy's, or excuse me, Porky's trying to get out of there. Tacho very, very low as well. That's going to be them going down. Just want to peek into bottom lane. All right, looks like there's just a catapult down there. Porky with Porky. some 200 health. Troy, Troy wants to find it. Troy wants to find that last little bit of damage, but they're not going to get it just there. <gasps> he misses. He misses the sleep. Valmar goes down for sure. He has buyback though. Not the worst death. The tranquility, yep, a little strange. Maybe we forgot that we took tranquility. We're 28 minutes in. We think we're in the next game. Probably might have considered that being a Twilight. Not really sure, but are <laughs> we, this is core too. now. Is this core now? Mephisto up in 15. Nano's up in five. Matthew Nano. This is it, it comes down to the Matthew Nano. A nice unstoppable coming out from Valmar. Nano is up. Ooh. Here we go. Oh, Parky's rooted. He can't Nano. That's disgusting. Missed time. Possibly a W though. Last race is gonna pick up the Rainer. Notori running, doing his best. I think the arrow has been cast to pick that up though. So we're back to square one Baja with a net of 30 gems for the blue side and 14 <laughs> for the red. Boss boss is up by the way. <laughs> boss is up. That is that was the game winner, and Rainer is dead. This is this is trouble, but this is where you this is where you force the you, you go middle, you court. This is where you threaten court. Oh wait, wait, yeah, wait, yeah, wait. Is, yeah, exactly. Funds, what are you doing? Why? Funds, funds, don't show. Funds, you're showing in lane. Guys, just go core now. They know. 
Gotta go. Go to the court. If the boss lava is taking wave guys, comes through. Are, okay, the lava wave's proxy. Wait a sec. <laughs> they don't know if they should finish the boss or not. Oh my on word. Court. They're coming Donuts the over boss. here. They're, they're, there's a lava wave through top lane. That's going to be a lot of them hearthing back. There's going to be the Hellgate over the over the core. That's going to be Lightning Breath as well coming out. There's going to be a nice necrotic wave out from the core as well, trying to get some damage. Last right's going to go onto funds. Doesn't get the kill right there. Lava <laughs> wave comes to the top lane. And the Donuts somehow, some way, take game number three on Tomb of Spider Queen. GG. Well played. Dear Lord. Mac. Uh, you know, I I've seen that loss happen one too many times, and that's where you, that's where you have to recognize <laughs> that's where you have to recognize <laughs> that the boss, while it may be your only win condition, also opens up the only win condition for the other team and the option of a backdoor. Right? Um, that's where you really need like your Matthew to like find them uh while you're while you're doing it and a great a great execution there from team donut to to recognize that be patient about it and somehow get away with it like funds was just like hey guys by the way my team is probably somewhere around the middle of the map maybe towards the hard camp where i'm kind of hovering in the middle lane right now uh <laughs> you guys want to keep doing the boss because we're probably gonna core and that nazebo what was that i don't I don't think we can see the stacks at this point in the game. No, like the last sure time like I checked, it was so plus. when they were when they were pushing to the core. Uh, I think it was like it wasn't the the core attempt that ended the game. It was the core attempt previous. They were like two seventy seven or something. So they were probably easily three hundred plus throughout that game, like or towards the end of that game, like. Woo, Nazebo. I mean, Nazebo put out some damage, but I'm not, like Pirate. Let's not scoff at Pirate throughout this entire game, like. 150k near and heroic damage 250 roughly in heroic or excuse me in siege like i know ragnaros is 480 base or 380 just, basically he hits, still, like he hits r and does a hundred thousand yeah he hits siege. r and clears all the way is that that was a wild one right there um do we want to try and jump into a quick interview with these players yeah let's head let's over over to team looks like donut we have, looks like we have, we have an extra player over there as well which will be interesting okay <laughs> let's jump on it <laughs> You have priority on every map now, apparently. <laughs> apparently. Congratulations on your victory, my delicious donuts. How are you feeling after that series? Uh, pretty good, I guess. Uh, I, I feel like I'm level 26. <laughs> yeah? I'm just frowning about the tower changes. Yeah. Really? That was, uh... That was, that was a... I'll, I'll be honest, that was the longest tomb game that I've probably cast in a very long time at what I would consider like top tier plays. So, um, <laughs> no, like I, I consider you all top tier in my eyes. I mean, come on now. Anyways, oh boy. Like, just take the compliment. That Anyways, was top tier Diablo <laughs> play. <laughs> yeah. So, so this isn't your interview, CPX. Let's, let's, no let's, bad let's, I want to talk about this Diablo really quickly because Mac and I were actually talking about this. Um, and we saw kind of the, the, um, the verbal realization of what was happening. The level seven dead rush that screw up the entire basis of like the zombie wall. Shadow charge in, kill him, win. <gasps> you win dead rush? Yeah, yeah. That's what it, it turned the wall into no, units and I I right. couldn't ever go in anyways because uh I just died immediately. Die so immediately. it probably didn't matter. There was one point where I charged into a wall and they literally teleported through it though. So that yeah, we, Mac and I were upset. giggling. Mac and I yeah, were giggling after. on stream about that. And we were and Mac was like, Oh, it's dead rush. And I was like, Oh, that makes sense, at least from me and not oh, as that that that's not that's not, that's not, that that's actually that's a not thing? why that happened. That's not why that happened. That was really? pre-7. Was pre -seven. I, pretty I think they're only considered units after it goes down. I'm pretty yeah. sure. Yeah, it still works normally until let's say like spaghetti coded it. press the button again. It could oh, be I, I spaghetti. We swore can. you had seven at that point, but hey, either way, it was yeah. We we thought that's what it was either um on that one, but no, it was a really really fun series. Let's we're gonna stay on Tomb of Spider Queen, you know, because you know you said towers. Like the biggest thing is the push potential from the towers. Do you think that like as, as you as a player, would you get rid of the armor reduction period? Would you change it? What would I, it feel I, better as a player? I think that's fine early game, but I think they just need to ramp it up for the late game. Like is. Like early game, that's fine, but like late game, the, the, you know, you should be able to end with that. I mean, so, they got a turn in and a boss post level twenty, and they got half of a keep. That's true. Yeah, but that's also because they're running that double support. Like we're gonna Matthew Nano and kill Diablo over and over, and like that's our calm. 
like their comp is not very good at sieging either right like that that was an argument true that i made and like that i think I is a weakness to this comp and potentially in this new heroes of the storm world this comp is not near as good because you can't i mean in your case you were able to defend because your characters are like giga defenders right um so like if they do win a team fight then like they don't really get anything because they can't siege past yeah. a lava wave and a rag for it so it's like you know and from my point of view if i were to be playing like wh why, why don't people prioritize things like murden like take sledge on murden and just throw 20 storm bolts and kill <laughs> keeps right like can't you do that like aren't you obviously just... murden just sucks that's what all the tank players tell me anyways <laughs> okay <Seriously>. well, <laughs> i mean i'm watching people just run around and taunt uh not not lunar's uh joanna's so it's uh, like garage yeah. doing anything either like uh, <laughs> at least with murden your cooldown's not 60 seconds to cc something so I, I it's like i guess my point is is like to consider playing the game differently because it is different now right the mm, stuff that you can dive yeah. towers with dwarf block too that's I was uh, just about ooh. to bring that up yeah dwarf yeah. block like I I love now the you're, game now you're opening your see, eyes. See, there you exactly. go. You got the. the but, um, I think Murrow's pretty underrated, honestly. Same. Now you're thinking with Stormbolt. But Diablo now, seems to struggle with us this patch. Yeah, Diablo is <laughs> horrible. Lost every game except for this one, which I probably should have. You can't lost, press so. W on walls without taking damage. You can't press W or Q. Oh yeah, that's yeah, true. You can't really siege or be aggressive outside yeah. of objective like phase. Slamming yeah. against yeah yeah towers is such a big part of his kit that it's a pretty big nerf. I want to ask uh, really quickly, uh, Cursed Hollow game, that was probably the first, if ever, a Tyrael game came into our in-house league. Um, is that just a comfort thing? Is it, is it because you knew you could be that aggressive? Can you talk about the reasoning why you took it? Because Mac and I were talking last week because I had casted some EU stuff and like how Tyrael's like first pick and it's not just, you know, they're not Every running, um, yeah. they're not running like a, a Juice Pirates or anything like that. They're legit picking Tyrael because they think it's valuable. Like, it's is safe. it just because no one knows it's how to safe. play it? Like, I know no, we talked about to. last week. Yeah. Yeah. Tank's good, and plus auto attackers are pretty high priority on that map, and mm -hmm. Tyrael's super good with AA heroes in general. So, and so just the uh, the boss control and okay. the holy grounds and chokes on that map is really strong. Would you Would you recommend to a lot of tank players in in all regions to to practice up that Tyrael for for those reasons, or just he's just strong regardless? Just a good hero in general. I think mm -hmm. I think that he's also not too hard to play. So. Uh, yeah, you just press all your buttons on cooldown, and then your team lives. It's awesome. If you accidentally <laughs> die to the fort, you just do more damage. That's true. And you also have what is it, ten percent uh, death timer reduction based on how many heroes you hit with I your pass? I didn't I get to about that, that first game, but I got to uh, I got to die eight times the next game, so <laughs> only the heroes were suave. He was making up for it. There, there's a good get, two minutes where we were farming souls for him so he could die again. <laughs> They, you were they, quick on those. We didn't know you were really quick on those souls. That four talent gets you stacked super fast, yeah, yeah, yeah. especially post sixteen. Like I looked at one point, it was like thirty, and then we looked at it again like a minute or two later. I was like, "It's eighty, hello." Yeah. Did they um buff Tyrael passive damage? I actually noticed that yesterday. I got like slapped for twelve hundred damage at like level ten from Tyrael passive, and I was like, "What? What just happened?" I don't know if they did. Someone Is said someone. No, I don't think he was. Someone said that they had buffed it, but like. A literal number, and I was curious if he if if it actually got buffed, and like that's the reason why people are picking it, like the fact that that little number change. Um, someone could have just said that just because I got molly waffed by it, but um, <laughs> yeah, it, it was like it was not a late game material passive, and it hit me for like twelve hundred damage, and I was just like, that is a large I'm number. I'm looking at the heroes patch notes website there's no mention of okay so uh so that might be that might be just so heroes has a lot of weird scaling things serial trait might scale at like a higher percentage than other oh. abilities that might be it okay not 100 percent sure i think there's like some page with all the percentage scaling but not 100 yeah, percent. i'll have to look into that myself yeah i'd be interested yeah, that's interesting. I um, think that I think that it has it probably Tyrael's uprising probably has a lot to do with the fact that um tanks are like pretty weak right now in general and mm -hmm. you know you're 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 it seems as I watch more games like the comps that have the Rainers and the Greymanes are the ones that can do things proactively 
uh, just because the other ranged damage dealers are fairly weak. Uh, yeah, it so, seems like immobile tanks are like really hard right now. Even like the Zul, right? I mean, you, you, I mean, you yeah. guys hard countered that Zul pick. It was completely useless. Oh god, yeah. Um, mm. and you know, even with them trying to go Mediv to like, it, similar to like a Mediv Garage, you know, it, it, it's, it's still, he couldn't get to anything. He was just gapped by Lunara, um, and Rainer, like his entire existence. So it's like creating Tyrael as a target that you know. Even with NA right now, I'm watching these games and like we're still just playing one shot comps with Curse Bullet, and mm -hmm. Tyrael is like really good into that because um, he doesn't really he doesn't posture. He just kind of sits around, pumps people up, and then if you get engaged on, he seems to like sink or uh, just run away. Right, so it's like creating like no target for the enemy team seems like the thing to be doing on Heroes of the Storm. But that makes sense. Yeah, to, if I may add as well, like the Lucio in that game paired super well because, you know, Tiro's got speed, Lucio's got speed, Tiro's got some shielding, Lucio's got some, like there's, there's, there's a, a lot of like, rats running around the there's screen, a lot dude. of good synergy between <laughs> Lucio and that Tyrael that you can just be, yeah, you can just be. I mean, I've, 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 I've long been an advocate of uh, Tyrael Lucio on Cursed. The only downside is that you... You can uh, overlap the ultimates, but like they never did that that game. It's pretty great. No, I, I'll like we said that on 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 in the game as well. Like the the all the 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 callouts for those boss invades were so well played. Like it was for the last one for the bottom lane one. It was you know wandering keg initial pushback. Then you had sanctification with the holy ground right after that. Like Tyrael came in just after the wandering keg. And then right as that was ending, the sound barrier dropped just the sanctification. And like, it was so well staggered out from all of you. Like, it was just like, it was something that, that McIntyre and I were like in awe about because we're yeah, just like, good. it's really well, good. it's really, it's good coordination and just good lapping of heroics. And it's just a great example of like how to defend your boss and how to stop a boss steal from happening. Because that right there, I'd say in my opinion, in my opinion, is pretty textbook. Yeah, I was uh, unmounted running up to that. You know, turtle speed and uh, just watching them rock face. <laughs> <laughs> right, cool. Well, these games are so much fun. It was an absolute blast to, to have you all here. Um, before we run out, are there any shouts that you guys would like to give? I guess like starting from, from like funds down. Oh, I have to go first. Um, let's see. Shout out to my team today. They played really well. Um, shout out to... Hero's Hearth for making this all possible. And uh, shout out to Porky's Medivh. He uh, played a lot better than I thought he would. Uh, I'll just shout out you guys again. Uh, thanks for having us. It's always fun coming on and playing. And uh, I guess I'll, I'll shout out Porky as well. Uh, he was talking a lot of shit. Uh, <laughs> trash. Sorry, I don't know if I can say that. You're but fine, uh, fine. but uh, he was talking a lot of trash for game. So shout him okay, out. Okay, okay. Porky just smiled in chat, by the way. <laughs> yeah, thanks for uh, casting. Thanks for uh, Heroes Hearth and Duke Cannon for putting this on. And uh, I'm also going to have to shout out Porky for letting us see the <laughs> uh, play. I was really <laughs> blown away. Yep, thanks for hosting this event. It's always been a blast. Shout out to Lupus for playing Joanna Game 1. Ooh, I got you. Yeah, thanks for the uh, just the community that everyone has. It's uh, it's really cool to have a group of people that like are all trying to, I don't know, have you know, play heroes together. It's pretty great. Play a dead game, smile. Oh, yes. oh, oh wait, 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 and shout out to Twitch chat. Hey. Oh, of course. For hanging out, well, watching you. the dead game. Bog. Thank you so much for for hanging out. Thanks for the interview. And uh, these are some fun games. Congratulations on your victory, and uh, we'll see you all down the road. All right, thanks. Guys. thanks, Bahamut and McIntyre. Later. All right, I have pulled you yep. into our channel. That's it. That and, wraps uh, up week yeah. six, dude. That's week six. No tasks uh, in our black hole. I'm really the depression starting to set in. I think uh, we just we just start like we just start drafting for them and say, show up, <laughs> play these characters for us. <laughs> Uh, no, no, McIntyre, these, these games were absolutely an, an absolute blast. I just closed the Twitch stream, which I did not mean to do so. Um, but before we kind of get out of here, uh, there's a lot of good information, like, like, and a lot of good videos. Like, let's say I wanted to, to maybe watch some of these previous weeks, because they're like, you realize today there's six weeks of these games. You're like, wait, I got five weeks I could be watching. Where's mm -hmm. a good place where I could maybe 
catch these vods. We so we actually we have our Heroes Hearth uh, YouTube channel, which has mm -hmm. tons of information about Heroes of the Storm. Uh, we just started up our Heroes uh, Hearth CCL channel, so that's all mm -hmm. of the competitive Heroes of the Storm, our in-house matches, our season one CCL matches. Um, you can catch. You can watch competitive heroes. You can watch informational heroes. Uh, Kyle Ferguson has a new video. It's either out or coming out very soon uh, on Garden of Terror. He has lots of previous videos about you know, should you ban Deathwing. We have pro builds. We have um, gameplays, really fun matches. I know we had a nice level 28 Garden of Terror game uh, on how we do. That was last week where... Yeah, we do. See, it was very similar to that to that <laughs> Spider Queen we just watched, except yeah. it actually just didn't end. No one could figure out how to win the game um, because the objective on that map is even worse, and a boss doesn't exist to push core. But yep, lots of fun Heroes of the Storm content. Obviously, continue to follow us here at uh, Heroes Earth on Twitch. We'll continue to bring content to you guys. We have the Heroes Wednesdays coming up. Tons of shows. Grubby EU show with Kendrick, Heku, Nubkex, and DNA Galaxy. We have How We Do during the afternoon. Usually me and Trick, uh, Liam. We tend to play Mimi or builds. We've we've got Allura playing with us as well. She's tons of fun if you haven't haven't watched her play. And then our dream team at night, which is Kai, Mockery, Kyle Ferguson, Tim uh, from Heroes of the Fitness, and Totsky. A bunch of awesome Heroes of the Storm players. Uh, a great community that we have here with Heroes Earth, and obviously. We thank everyone in the chat that watches us uh, weekly and hangs out with us and, and still believes and supports this game. So if you're into Heroes of the Storm content, Heroes Earth is the place you should be. Uh, and we'll continue to make content for you guys to enjoy. Uh, when is CCL start? Uh, soon TM. Winky smile. Winky in face. Just keep w your eyes peeled. Winky smile emoticons in the chat. Uh but yeah, no, that, that's going to wrap us up for week number six of the Heroes Hearth in-house league brought to us by the uh, Celebrity Clash League. And uh, we'll be back next Monday, 6 o'clock PDT, uh, 8 o'clock CDT, 9 o'clock EDT. And well, well, we might as well say it because we said everything else, 7 o'clock Mountain Time. So uh, <laughs> come on by. I just I realized I skipped just over Mountain sometime Time. Sometime like, at night time. <laughs> sometime at night. But come by on Monday. You can go ahead and watch some awesome best of five series from all these wonderful players. You can see some memes. You can see us make fun of the fact that they don't pick the heroes we want the most. And uh all that good stuff. But uh, yeah, this has been an absolute blast. We'll see you all next Monday. But as McIntyre said, you can follow the uh, CCL YouTube page, the regular Her Heroes Hearth YouTube page. There's also the Giant Slayer YouTube page and their mm. content as well for any of those uh, Riot-based games, Runeterra, um, Valorant as well. So definitely check that out. And um, yeah, we'll see you all on Monday. And if you're itching for more content before that, see you all on Wednesday on this channel, starting at, I believe it's like, 10 o'clock pdt or something like that in the morning oh, no, it's not all, the all, times it's, again it's 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 it's, a, <laughs> it's all day on this channel basically yeah, as you said there's the grubby there show go. there's the max show what and then there's the central, uh, yeah west coast high berries. dream dream team <laughs> yeah that's us every wednesday hopefully we see you guys then um thanks for hanging out with us yeah hope yeah. you enjoyed see you in the nexus good night good night everyone